Howard Colby Ives was a Unitarian minister in New York who became a Baha'i after encounters with Abdul Baha. Howard was also a smoker. When Abdul Baha visited New York, Howard was not in the best of health, having some long difficulties. He was considering quitting smoking yet again. In fact, in fact, he wrote, I had always prided myself on the ability to break the habit at any time. And yet, it was always a momentary lapse in the habit. Nothing lasting. And that summer, because of life circumstances, he was too nervous to not smoke. With his pride, though, he also had a shame about the habit. Though he wanted to, he didn't bring it up to Abdul Baha the first or so time they had met. Finally, he got over his guilt to ask Abdul Baha advice on how to quit smoking. When they next met, he very shyly began to tell Abdul Baha about his habit. He wrote, It was like a child confessing to his mother, and my voice trailed away to embarrassed silence after only the fewest of words. Yet, Abdul Baha was the embodiment of loving kindness and understanding, and never perpetrated the embarrassment that Howard felt about his habit. After Howard was done speaking, Abdul Baha quietly asked how much he smoked. Howard told him, and Abdul Baha, with a gentle smile and a twinkle in his eyes, responded that he didn't think it was harmful, that the men in Persia smoke to the point where their beards are filled with smoke, and that he shouldn't be troubled by it at all. Howard, at first, was a bit perplexed, and he did not understand. He wrote, not a dissertation on the evil of habit, not an explanation of the bad effects on health, not a summoning of my willpower to overcome desire. Rather, Abdul Baha freed him. Howard then felt the burden of shame lifted from his shoulders, and he felt relief. During the next few days, Howard wrote, his inner conflict was stilled, and he was at last able to enjoy his smoke with no smite of conscience. A few days later, after this conversation, his desire for smoking was gone, and he quit. From this encounter, Howard concluded the power of love to bring true freedom, freedom from desire of self, from the habits of lower nature, from the fetters of this world. He freed Howard. Through all embracing love, he freed Howard from a focus on self, and through showering each other with loving kindness, we can accompany each other to free ourselves from the bondage of the animal prompting that weighs us down. Our first duty to each other is to let our hearts burn with loving kindness. From this we can think about building upon justice, unity, capacity, etc. We can draw out two elements within Howard's encounter with Abdul Baha. The first is that through his love, Abdul Baha did not allow any feelings of guilt or self-righteousness to enter into the conversation. Howard came to him with guilt about a habit, and Abdul Baha said it wasn't a big deal. Howard came to him with a pride on being able to quit. And Abdul Baha didn't appeal to any will to power. 
Guilt and self-righteousness are both manifestations of ego on two extremes that our self-focused society often evokes to motivate behavior. However, the most powerful motivator of human action is an understanding of true self that comes from selflessness. Freeing oneself from ego and oftentimes in healthcare, patients come with various forms of ego, like guilt, which society has attributed to their health concern. Physicians perpetrate this spotlight on the ego by a focus on the individual. Yet clearly an inner conflict through pointing out evils of habit is futile. The most powerful way to transform self is a focus away from it on selflessness. This leads to the second point, a true understanding of human nature. If someone considers their identity as a smoker, how is a physician going to say, don't smoke, and continue by saying, here are all the reasons why you shouldn't. This is telling them not to be who they think they are. Quite a dehumanizing experience. And yet, the healthcare system has gotten into this habit itself. Abdul Baha did not attack Howard's sense of identity. Instead, he helped Howard consider another perspective that he is a spiritual, noble human being with a soul. And his true identity is not any category that society assigns like smoker, black, women, liberal, academic, gay, banker, diabetic, depressed, etc. In the end, all these categories are at best secondary aspects of a human being and at worst, distortions of true human identity. To detach from a habit, a desire, one has to understand that this habit or desire is not one's true nature. One's true nature is that of the soul. Once Howard's guilt over smoking was lifted, his identity as a smoker was shown erroneous, and his true identity as a noble spiritual being was affirmed. He was able to place this minor in its proper place as just that, something that provides momentary enjoyment to the lower self or tangential significance. And then, quite naturally, as his higher nature assumed its rightful place, he no longer felt like smoking.